What's going on fam? It's your boy Sydney, and welcome back to another video. A lot of y'all have been requesting us to do a build video on our Johnson Scovich tractor. So this is what we're going to show you how we built this lightweight Johnson Scovich plant. So first let's cover the materials and then we'll go over the build and then we'll go over the pros and cons and how to move this. First, let's talk about the wood. You could use whatever type of wood that you would like to use for your tractor. For us, we use the pressure treated wood since they're not eating off of it or anything of that nature. Then you're gonna to need to grab half inch EMT conduit and you need about five of those. You're also gonna need some chicken wire and some fabric cloth. Uh, so that way you'll be able to secure your chickens when you're, they're inside of the coop. Next, you're going to need some tarp. Uh, this is a 10 by 14 tarp. Uh, you're also going to need some 8 inch UV strap ties. You're also going to need some 9 inch straps and nine, uh, 90 degree gussets. And you can find those in the decking area in the hardware store. And you're going to also need some 9 inch wheels. Now with the 9 inch wheels, we had a hard time finding those. So we went to Tractor Supply to grab some 8 inch ones. And those didn't uh, turn out to be so well because the bearings will keep on uh, coming off of those. So unless you have like a tack welder or some way to secure those uh, the bearings on those, I wouldn't suggest getting those. We did, however, uh, go to the big box store, another big box store, and grab some, what was it, nine inch wheels? And so far, the miss has been loving those because they're a little bit bigger and they're easier to go over uh, some of the terrain that we have here. Next, you're gonna need a galvanized half inch by six to eight inches uh, carriage bolts with a washer and a nut, and those are gonna be for your wheels and your wheel supports. Now, let's go build. First, once you get all your materials, you're gonna need to cut your wood to length. After you cut the boards to length and size, uh, you're going to want to either do the half lap joints, which is a strong joint, or if you did the lightweight method like us, you can do the pocket screws. Once you're done either doing the lap joints or the pocket screws, now the fun part is the assembly.
the modification that we've done is we added a roosting bar for our breeder stock. It's best to add the roosting bar prior to adding the hardware cloth onto the frame. time to bend the conduit poles. Now, we've been seeing a lot of feedback about the bending of the conduit poles. Unless you have any experience bending these conduits, it's a lot harder than what you think. After about three tries, I finally got the method of bending these. And it also helps if you have a jig. That jig is a very important key when you're building these last 45 uh, degree angle. Had some footage on it, but it got lost. A lot of people use cattle panels because of the difficulty. The reason why he used the conduit is because it's easy to bend to the shape that you need, at least for him. Now is the time to add the hardware cloth. Now, luckily, we had a good friend, Mike, the fit farmer, and his family come and helped us out with this build. And we learned a lot of tricks in the trades of doing different things on the homestead, especially dealing with the hardware cloth. All right, so we got Mike with the fit farmer. <laughs> We're gonna finish this, wrapping this uh, tractor here. Just got to do this back port part right here. anything about why you're changing from chicken wire to hardware claw? Uh, we're basically doing the uh, hardware cloth is just a lot sturdier uh, for predator control basically. It, it's, it's more rigid and it, it takes a while a lot for a raccoon or any type of predator to burn a lot of calories to even try to penetrate this. They'll have to I don't know if they will be able to dig under, underneath it because it still has some type of weight, but so far so good. We haven't had any issues. Yeah, because the chicken wire is definitely a, a cheaper option, but not the best option as far as quality. After you get the hardware cloth on and the arches, uh, we added the chicken wire going across through here. And on the first uh, John Suskovich plan, his calls for adding a four foot on each side and leaving this empty void. Uh, however, we felt like we didn't like that option. So we're gonna put this over all three sections. And on John Suskovich plan, he doesn't have anything going over this middle section. He'll just have the first two and then with the tarp. But after doing our first one, we didn't like that idea because once we have the birds on the nesting bar, they, they can jump up here and get trapped in between the cage itself and the tarp. So we'll put it over on all three sections. So on this build, I'm noticing that this is quite a bit taller. Yes, because as you can see, I'm about six one and some change. And going through those other tractors, I'm like ducking down and whatnot. The other three is perfect for you and Mike, where y'all could just walk through here freely and stuff. Yeah. Um. So like, I think one of the things that we're liking about this is that you can modify and make these slight changes for yeah. little stuff like that. What did you do to, uh, to accommodate for this height? I just added uh, about three and a half more inches on these uh, vertical. Uh, post structures. The good thing about any projects that you see on the homestead, they might fit their need. Mike might do something that fit his need that don't fit my need and I'll, I'll change it and modify it and vice versa. So don't be afraid to get your hands in there, make some modification and, and adjust it to your needs. Is that correct? Yeah. So here you went with the uh, chicken wire instead yes. of hardware cloth. Why is that? Well, on this, his plans, he calls for the chicken wire on top of here and it's going to I was kind of hesitant at first because of raccoons and this is not as sturdy as you can see compared to the hardware cloth. 
but it made sense once you put your uh, tarp over it, it, it gives it a little bit more resistance for the animal to get through there. So now we're just gonna secure this end wall and then we'll cut it and put the remaining pieces on the other side. And you're just doing that there with zip ties? You just zip ties. Zip ties and duct tape. That's, the yeah. that important. That's a good, big thing to have on the farm, important yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see a lot of everybody's, they mentioned their first one and they're like, yes. I, I, I even, uh, what's his name? Morgan Gold, he showed his first one. I was like, okay. <laughs> you weren't sure if I was building a chicken tractor or I was trying to be first in flight. <laughs> I always want to make sure this is secure first. I'm going to walk it. After you get all your zip ties uh, secured to the chicken wire, then we added the tarp on. And I would suggest using at least two people for putting the tarp on. All right, so we got this 10 by 14 tarp. And then we'll just wrap this around and secure it. The zip ties in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this 10 by 14 is supposed to be a perfect fit for this structure, so. You made it taller, though. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? But that's okay, that's just. Yeah, just give it more room yeah. for the birds to have yeah. some more air up there. So, which way is the 10 by 14? Yeah, that way, yeah. So, one of the things I might do when I build mine, since you've inspired me to build <laughs> is uh, Bootstrap Farmer has this uh, channel and wiggle wire that is for greenhouses mainly, and you just will basically screw the channel down along the side. Mm -hmm push this tarp into the channel and then take your wiggle wire and put it right inside there and it will really help pull everything really, really, really tight. tight. Okay. Oh. So, uh, just something to think about. Oh. And on their website, it's actually spring wire. There we go, spring wire. wiggle wire. <laughs> spring wire. I knew what you meant. <laughs> okay. I, can, I would call it wiggle wire too. <laughs> so what we just did was we add some carabiners and some eye hooks onto the uh, frame here. We add the carabiners to the uh, tarp so that way, if we needed to have them to get some more vitamin D from the sun, we'll be able to roll this back from either side. And also helps it stay secured. And it's a good, quick and easy way to, if we ever need to just take it off and just wrap it up for the season, we can just do that. Next, you're gonna add the 90 degree supports on each end of the corners. That's gonna add rigidness for when you're doing all the torquing and the moving of the tractor, uh, because that wood is gonna be bending and twisting, and that bracket is gonna help make sure it doesn't bend out of place. So then with the nine inch strap, you're gonna cut those in half. Uh, that is gonna be for each of the parts of the wheel. After you drill the holes, you're gonna take the carriage bolts uh, through there with the nuts and the washer and place it against the flat part of the nine inch strap. And the galvanized uh, parts for this is gonna help it prevent it from rusting and being breaking off later down the road. Then, if you want, you can add this additional support for when you take your wheels off and on, uh, so that way you'll know where your wheels are at later on after you move them. On his plans, he's gonna have you drill a hole through here and do a uh, tie so that way you can keep on moving your tractor. Uh, we were trying to save costs at the time. We had just made one rope and then we added eye bolts on all four sides. And so that way, when we were moving all the tractors, we just use one rope, clip it on and that easy. And it also helps to shimmy it in different directions, having that eye bolt on all corners. Uh, next, let's talk about the accessories on the inside. We like this waterer. Um, it's easy to fill up and the chickens love it. Uh, we have it at a certain height where they have to reach up, but not to where they have to stretch out of uh, their way to get to the water. Uh, we got that from Tractor Supply. Uh, next is whatever type of pan that you want to use with your feed and your animals, uh, you can use that. However, I would suggest using the trough and have it suspended from the uh, ridge here uh, because when you're moving uh, your tractor, 
You don't have to worry about going inside to moving out the food dish. It goes with it and it makes cleanup a lot easier. Uh, one of the other modifications that we've done is we added this uh, plywood uh, for this door so that way we can secure an automatic uh, door to here. Now, I like having the automatic door because on the weekends, I get to sleep in just a little bit and they're able to come out and be able to forge out through here. And then at night, they'll be able to go in. We don't have to wrangle them up and put them all inside. Uh, they go in on their own, the door shuts and it keeps them protected. Another thing what we did on all of the tractors except for this one is we added the light. So this was an extra option that we modified on here. We added a solar motion sensor light that we got from one of the big box stores and it's just real easy like if you have to come up here late at night to check on your birds you'll be able to see the direct path. So this is something that you can add on there. So now let's talk about the pros and cons. What are some of your pros that you like about this? I love that it's really easy to clean up. So I really like that I can give them fresh grass for most of the day where they're able to like pick off on the bugs and that's for the meat birds. For the breeder stock, I really love that they have a little safe place to go to. I still move it every day within their modified fencing and they seem really happy with it. So for my pros is what I like about it it's a good size for the amount of production that we're using or are or, or using for meat. And like now, we got about 25, 30 in here and they're in there comfortably. And then when it comes to camp day, freezer camp day, uh, it's easy just to go in there, pick them up instead of going through that uh, Joe Salatin thing where it's like two feet uh, high and you got to crouch down and be all in that stuff. And then I don't like that part. So this one that we're just easy to pick them up and just do the whole dispatching from there. What is the con that you don't like about these John Siskovich tractors? So what we've done with the original one that is that heavy is we've turned it into our nursing pen. So I don't have to move it a whole lot like I did before. So these are our meat birds. So the first process of the setup is you want to move. If you're okay with touching poopy wheels, you can uh, go ahead and just take these and put them on. If you have an issue with that, you can get you some gloves and add them on. I don't have an issue because I'm gonna wash my hands afterwards anyway. So you just- And the miss actually uses gloves. Yeah, she uses gloves, I don't. So the wheels are on. Now when you have your birds first into this meat tractor, you wanna have somebody in the back while you're pulling because the birds aren't gonna know what's going on right now. So when you be pulling it, the chickens will stay in the back and sometimes get ran over if no one's in the back kind of guiding them away from the back end. But now that they've been in this coop here for a quite some time, they know the process where once we move in it, they're looking for that uh, grass. So as we move in them, you're gonna see them start just pecking at the grass and going after the bugs. And then that way it keeps them occupied while I feed them. Chip, 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 chip. Chip, 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 chip. About right there. And we're watching for the square in the back. Mm -hmm. And we end it right at the line. And that's what we just left. <laughs> See, as you see with the trough, you don't have to move the trough prior to moving them. <laughs> they are loving this fermented corn. <laughs> and sometimes I'll just dump out some of it over here. They're good on water, so we don't have to uh, refill any of the water. Now, a lot of y'all have been asking why we just don't leave the wheels on. As you can see, it has some gap right here, and it's easy for a predator 
to uh, dig out easier to get up under there and take one of our meat birds. So we learned from our uh, mentors that you want to have any predators burn as much calories as possible before they get your birds or any type of livestock. So that's why we take off the wheels. Heavy enough that it would make them work harder. Yeah. To try to get to one of the birds. See, this is what I was talking about with the ball bearings. It's always falling off. If we had a tack weld or do a hole punch somewhere around there, maybe that will keep these ball bearings on there. So these are the nine inch wheels that we got from the big box store, lawnmower wheels, and we haven't had any issues. I really like those wheels. These are non-flat uh, wheels, so we don't have to worry about them trying to get deflated or trying to inflate them or anything of that nature. We really appreciate the Fit Farmer and his family coming down and doing some fellowship and meeting with us and everything and definitely helping us uh, doing this build here. Especially the part you don't like, skinning it. Yeah, because he gave us some, uh, off, some great tips on how to do different things on the homestead, what he wouldn't normally do, especially with the whole wrapping of the tarp with the channel and the wiggle wire. If y'all have actually built a meat tractor, whether it's the John Siskovich or if the, it was even the Joe Salatin tractor, comment down below which one you like the best and what type of mod modifications that you've done to those.